take care of you. Go everywhere with you. Always be there with you day by day. God will provide for you. Be as a guide to you. Lovingly show you the way. Fear not for tomorrow and what lies ahead. The future events be unknown, but welcome the morning with courage instead, for you will not face it alone. God will take care of you, go everywhere with you, always be there with you day by day. God will provide for you, be as a guide to you, lovingly show you the way. Fear not for tomorrow, but lift up your voice in anthems of glorious praise. Give thanks for your blessings and truly rejoice, for God will be with you always. God will take care of you, go everywhere with you, always be there with you day by day. God will provide for you, be as a guide to you, lovingly show you the way. The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship. And I hope that you all have a very thankful Thanksgiving. And we'll stand for our first hymn. Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, 
and serve you in willing obedience. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Joel. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruits. The fig tree and the vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from 1 Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all, 
and this was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join me in the gospel verse. Hallelujah. God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that you may always have enough of everything and may provide in abundance for every good work. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In this teaching, Jesus repeats one word over and over again. You know what that word is? Worry. <laughs> yep, worry. <clears throat> Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, about your body, what you're going to wear. And can any of you, by worrying at a single hour of your span of life, and why do you worry about clothes. Therefore do not worry, saying what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Jesus knows that a head full of worry will never allow a heart full of thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but I tend to be a worrier. Would that be right, family? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Don't worry, be happy. Sounds great in theory. But how do you actually put it into practice? Well, I had a spiritual director when I was 28 years old and a very uh, anxious young pastor uh, who tried to show me how to put this into practice. He, he directed me. Here's the, here's the scheme he had for me. He directed me to get outside and run every day to cut down on my nervous energy. So that's what I did, three miles a day. In addition, he had me read this passage from Matthew's Gospel every day for three months until it sunk in. It did help. And so I have grown to have a great appreciation for this teaching of Jesus. Jesus practiced what he preached. So far as we can tell, he doesn't seem to have been a person who worried a great deal. He lived his life on the principle of trusting his heavenly father, and he tried to teach his followers to do the same. So as we read a passage like today, we should see that it flows straight out of his own life experience. And I'd like to suggest to you there are three basic attitudes that are at the heart of Jesus' experience of life. These three attitudes that are reflected in this passage are joy, the attitude of trust, 
And the attitude of focus, attention. So first of all, joy. Jesus found joy in the good things that his heavenly father had created. You know, I grew up with parents who put out bird feeders and, and kept a bird book handy to identify the customers. Um, my, uh, my seat at the kitchen table was right next to the window, and right outside of that was a bird feeder. We loved to see who would visit. So I've always enjoyed watching the birds, so it's nice to find Jesus recommending this as a hobby. Look at the birds of the air, he says. I like the thought of that, Jesus watching the birds, you know, diving and swooping with the wind, uh, you know, above the Galilean hills. You know, no, no doubt he spent some time looking at those beautiful creatures. Do you ever stop to marvel at especially the larger birds who use the wind current so effectively? You know, they hang in the air and circle and hardly even need to flap their wings to stay aloft. They seem to be enjoying themselves, riding the currents of air just as God created them to do. I love to lay in my sailboat in the summer and, and watch them overhead. Or have you ever watched the martins, especially in the evening? Martins just seem to f fly for the joy of it. They seem like the creatures that, you know, they're made to do it and they love it. Um, when I was a child, there was a martin house in my neighbor's backyard, and I spent many summer evenings sitting with my dad, watching the martins swoop and maneuver. I think that Jesus had watched birds do this sort of thing many times, and he had figured out that they never seemed to weary themselves doing the kind of work that humans do, and yet they somehow managed to stay alive and well. The Heavenly Father fed them. So that's one example he gives of why we needn't worry. The Father feeds. Jesus was also familiar with all the, the flowers as he traveled to the Galilean fields and admired their beauty. Um, we've got translated here uh, the li lilies of the field. Um, and, and really, uh, the original Greek word could, could mean any of, of a variety of flowers. But he, he no doubt walked through those hills and he, he admired their beauty. And, but the, think about it. One moment they could be standing in the field uh, and the next they could be trampled underfoot by somebody walking by or, or even cut down with a, with, a, with a sickle. But think about their beauty. The flowers didn't spend thousands of dollars on clothes. They were just themselves, beautiful, God-given, and free. Jesus looked around and he saw all this. And he, he had great joy in it. <laughs> but he saw more than this. He didn't only see the creation, he also saw through it to his father, the creator. Uh, it's like the hymn that we love so much. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hands the wonders wrought. This is my father's world. The birds their carols raise. The morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass, I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. Isn't that one of your favorite hymns? Yeah. And isn't that, um, you know, the experience of Jesus? Jesus lived a life of joy because he not only enjoyed the creation around him, he also received it as a gift from the Father, the creator of all. And none of this was about ownership either. Jesus didn't have to own the birds in order to enjoy watching them, and he didn't have to own a field in order to enjoy the beauty of its flowers. He could simply receive it all as a free gift from his Father. So joy in, in what the Father has already given us. That's one of Jesus' attitudes in life and in his ministry, what he tried to teach his disciples. And this leads us to a second attitude that is the heart of Jesus' experience of life. Uh, the attitude of trust in his heavenly father. You know, I was blessed with a father who was a good provider. Uh, first as an army sergeant and then a, a civil servant. My mother was also attentive to taking care of uh, my two older sisters and I. She prepared all of our meals and spent a lot of time at the sewing machine making clothes, especially for my sisters. We didn't live in a big house or have a lot of things, but I don't ever remember worrying about not having food to eat or clothes to wear. 
Now, of course, I might be prone to coveting, you know, what some other kid in the neighborhood had that, <laughs> that I couldn't get, but we always had what we needed. And we knew that our parents loved us and we would always be secure. We knew that they would make sure we had the necessities of life. And Jesus had that sort of trust in his heavenly father. He had a strong sense of the goodness of God. To him, the goodness of the created world was a sign of the goodness of the one who made it. And his teaching grew out of his own experience. When he told his followers not to worry about tomorrow, we can assume that he had learned this attitude by putting it into practice himself. He knew from his own experience that the creator of all this beauty was a loving and dependable father. And because of this relationship with his father, Jesus was able to break free from you know, the tyranny of worry that often grips people and focus his life on the things that really matter. You know, there's an old saying that uh, uh, energy flows where, where attention goes, and he knew where to put his attention. So even though Jesus seems to have known all along that a cross was ahead for him, we don't get the sense that he was always looking ahead anxiously, worrying about what was coming next. Rather, he seems to have been able to live in the present moment, giving attention to the people with him, celebrating the goodness of God in the here and now. And he wanted his followers to do the same. It's important to recognize that when Jesus tells us not to worry about food and, and drink and clothing, he's not saying that these things don't matter. He doesn't mean that you know, we should live an ascetic lifestyle like a monk or something, eating and drinking as little as possible and you know, wearing ragged clothes. No, Jesus himself enjoyed the good things of life, and he wasn't telling us that they aren't important. Rather, he was telling us that we are the children of a loving father who wants to give good gifts to his children. We can trust our father to provide for us just as he provides for the rest of creation. It also means uh, that we shouldn't plant seeds and reap a harvest or think that we shouldn't work at you know, weaving and spinning to make clothes or, of course, that we shouldn't work at our own jobs and earn money to pay for those things. Rather, we should do these things with joy because God is not a mean tyrant who is out to get us and make life difficult for us, but our loving Father who wants to take care of us and give us the fruits of the earth as a gift. So, Jesus would counsel us to get close to, uh, uh, to the creation and learn to take joy in all that God has made there. And he would counsel us to learn to know and trust God as our Heavenly Father. The more we cultivate our relationship with the Father, the easier it will be for us to live our lives on the basis of simple trust in Him. So joy... And trust, both attitudes that Jesus showed in his life and tried to teach his disciples. And uh, finally, uh, Jesus would counsel us to choose our focus wisely. What are we going to pay attention to? The end of today's gospel, he says, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So this is, this is the heart of it all. The reason Jesus was able to live in joyful trust in his heavenly father was that he had made his heavenly father's priorities his own. He challenges us to do the same. Seek first the kingdom of God. Make it the number one value in your life. And God will respond by providing for you what you need to live. And what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God means God's power and love at work through Jesus to heal the world and restore it to his original intention and plan. In other words, Jesus setting things right. And he does that through us. One day this plan will come to completion. Every knee will bow to Jesus and God's reign of peace will be established and will last forever. So Jesus challenges us to focus on that vision, to work toward it, and to make it the number one value in our lives. Uh, there's a famous poem written by a, a British missionary to, to China, Charles Thomas Studd. And uh, there's a, uh, a line that's repeated at the end of each stanza of this very long poem. But it's a great bit of advice. Only one life will soon be passed 
Only what's done for God will last. Now, done for God means more than just our work in the church. It means that, of course. But God's purposes for his world are far wider. And they include building strong families, nurturing, caring communities. They include working toward a world where everyone has enough, no one has too much. A world in which future generations will be able to enjoy the birds of the air and the lilies of the field in peace. God's purpose includes, above all, the spread of the good news of Jesus with a call to everyone to become his disciples. So, these are three attitudes that Jesus lived by himself and that he desired to pass on to his followers. Joy in God and in all the good things that God has made. Trust in the goodness of of his heavenly father and in his daily uh, provision for our needs. And focus, above all, in doing God's will and seeking the coming of the kingdom. So does that sound good to you? (laughs) Yeah, it does. We want to walk through life like Jesus did. With our hand in the Father's hand, focusing on the things he tells us to focus on, and trusting him to provide the necessities of life for us. So may we be people who turn to Jesus to teach us this way of the kingdom of God. May we learn day by day to find joy in God's creation, to trust in the goodness of our Heavenly Father, to focus our attention on seeking God's kingdom and doing God's will. This is the way to cultivate a thankful heart and to live with thanksgiving every day. Amen. baptism into Jesus Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess the faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. In communion with all the saints, let us pray to God who is our eternal home. We give you thanks, O God, for your church and for the wondrous ways in which you have dealt with your people. Continue to inspire the church to be a blessing in our communities and in the society at large. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O God, for the diversity of the world's people, for all nations and their leaders. Grant to all your wisdom and grace that a quiet and peaceable life would be possible for all people. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O God, for your abundant blessings to us and for the bounty of the world's resources. Help us to share of our plenty with those in need. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O God, for this congregation and for the praises you have put in our mouths and in our hearts. Help us to work to ensure that people in our community have sufficient food, clothing, and shelter. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you are the great physician and that you reach out to touch people with your love. We lift up before you today those who are in need of your healing touch. Donna Yost, Ruth Auten, Maxine Riemensteiner, Barb Coker, Joe Murray, Shirley Mengus, Lynn Wida, Robert Mertz, Leonard Tyson, Ron Koch, Nancy Rice, Gloria Appleman, Scott Appleman, Carla Mahaffey, Earl Jarrett, Leon Hagenbooth, Viola Fligger, John Hemrick, Frida Kiefer, Jeanette Calhoun, Robert Stom, Mark Bieber, Lillian Fry, Judah Rex Elkin, George and Roxy Trutt, Greg Travis, Heath Whitmer, Mary Betts, Deb Bryson, Julia Tebbets, Brad Lidecker, Derek Kotner, Ron Ott, Janice Knauer, Ezra Shaw, Josh and Savannah, Jennifer, Tom Jarrett, Susan and Jeff Group, Marty Hockenberry, Linda Arbel, Mark and Michelle Land, Marion Johns, Shauna, Dave Litchard, Cindy Myers, Brent Benjamin Doran, Thea Williams, Chris Brome, John and Louise Noggle, Bob Weaver, Michael Kenny, Bonnie Carey, Leanne Barnes, Bob Weaver, Ed Keller, Aaron Murray, David DiCaprio, Tom Forker, Everett Tomlinson, Bob Ladiak, Burley Blanton, Susan Romali, Ken Ryder, George Albertson, Renee and Jackie Fligger, Chris and Kathy Walters, Taylor, Juana Reed, Sarah Johnson, Patricia Johnson, Joe Myers, Kathy Alderson, Wallace Royals, Red Yeagle, James Lohman, Ken Reynolds, and those we name out loud before you. Provide them with the healing they need. Bless those who watch over them. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks to God for bringing the promise of comfort to those who grieve, especially the family of Mike Anderson and Alec Litchard. We remember with praise and thanksgiving all who have died and who now rest at peace in your eternal heartless home. Lord, in your mercy, your reign, O God, endures forever, and in Christ we are free to be your saints and servants. Hear our prayers for the sake of him who died and rose again and lives with you in the company of all your saints in light. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have given. Because of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed. Or we give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you. Through him you created all things, and in him you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot, and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who fulfilled all your will, and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. It is he who handed over to a death he freely accepted, in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection. Taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, Take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is my blood poured out for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. And we ask you, send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, happy are those who are called to his supper. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Come to the table for all is ready, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Christ given for you. And Christ given for you. Jesus was born for you. Jesus was born for you. Body of Christ given 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 for you. Amen. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you in his grace. Amen. We stand for prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.